Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1991, we're going to be taking a look at Nils Lofgren and he's going to be playing through Valentine. So let's get Nils up on screen and see how he gets on. going to jump in here just so we can break down a few things in the intro the way that Nils is playing that finger style in terms of he's got a pick on his thumb and his first finger second finger and third finger he's not playing patterns here but he is using his first finger to get artificial harmonics which is when you are playing lead with the left hand and the easiest place to go is halfway up between where you're fretting the note and the bridge and you just strike the string but then also touch it with your first finger and that's what you can see Neil's doing in the intro the way that he's striking with his thumb where he's got that thumb pick on but then he's got his first finger extended just touching the string exactly halfway between the bridge and the note that he's fretting so you get that harmonic and it gives it such a cool sound especially when it's combined like Nils does with that volume just swelling it in and he does use that quite a lot even when he's singing so there's a lot of technical ability going on here on the fretboard but also on the volume control of the guitar because he does this sometimes while he's singing and it takes a lot 
of concentration and being able to do two things at once. Normally, if a player is just strumming out chords, that's fine. I always say that it's a little bit more difficult once you start playing riffs. But then once you start playing lead lines and fading them in and out with that right hand, it's just another thing to think about. And Nils has got one of those really unique voices as well. And he sometimes does go to that finger style technique for getting a more dramatic sound with the chords in terms of picking each string individually and cascading through them rather than just strumming the chord and you're getting one block of noise by cascading through those strings it means you get a really nice deliberate sound it's just more exaggerated and it just makes it stand out a little bit more a lot of people will know Niels from Bruce Springsteen's E Street Band and having the ability to play guitar like he does but also sing it's a massive advantage when you are backing up other artists because you can add so much to the table he also plays piano and interestingly when he was age five he started on the classical accordion which he played for 10 years and he did study classical music and jazz music in his youth and it wasn't until he was a bit older that he then started to get into rock. Nils has got one of those voices that's just really easy to listen to and in 1968 he did have his own band called Grin and that was the time that he met Neil Young and at that point he did actually join up with Neil Neil Young and played in Neil Young's band and then off the back of that in 1971 he got his own record deal with Grin so he is one of those guys that as we can see fronts a band and can do everything himself out the front but then has supported artists in the background as well and in 1971 when he did get signed that lasted for three years and unfortunately it didn't take off quite as much as the record label had hoped so in 1974 Grin were unfortunately dropped dropped from that label. And another thing that he does really well in terms of playing is throw in those fill shapes and really fill in the space where it needs filling and doesn't overplay either. And that is a fine balance getting between those two. In the intro, we have got a really heavy overdriven tone here and there is just a touch of delay on it as well. So he's keeping that all under control and You've got to have such great dynamic control in order to play with this kind of aggressive tone over what effectively is quite a low key backing. We've just got some strings in there being played on the keys and everything else quite low dynamically. So the fact that Niels is always in control of that guitar just shows what a great player he is as well as throwing together these lead lines whilst playing and singing and always having that option of throwing in that artificial harmonic like Niels does will always give his lead a slightly different sound, a slightly different twist. What you'll find is that most players when they're throwing in harmonics, they will be pinched harmonics with the right hand and that's achieved by using a pick and then picking the string and just catching the string with your thumb as you follow through therefore stopping the string from vibrating and giving you that harmonic but Niels the way that he plays it he's not doing it like that so when he wants a lot of harmonic sounds he's using that first finger in order to get that let's get back into it
Be my Valentine, Parkinson. And there we have it. One of the things to point out about that whole lead section is the dynamic control that we have throughout. The way that Nils starts with quite a lot of that tone rolled off and then eventually we end up with a full 100% tone in terms of that volume up to 10 but then also the delay that's added on. So it's now giving you such a different sound to the lead that you've just been hearing and also the way that he's playing because the first part of that lead is really understated. There's not a lot of stuff going on there really. But then once he starts leaning into the sound and just pushing it closer to the edge, that's when he starts introducing, if you watch that first finger, more and more harmonics, more bends, more expression, more vibrato at the top of bends as well, gradually just working his way up that fretboard in terms of pitch, just to get that crescendo to end at the top of the mountain. And the top players do that, even when they they're ad-libbing, they always follow that blueprint of taking you on a journey and always ending up at the best place so that it is resolved and it's just the best finish to a solo on a high bend, always high up on that high E string. And Niels is one of those guys that's absolutely seasoned in providing ad-libbed solos that can take you on a journey and just take you right to the top of the mountain. And this is quite a long performance, eight minutes in length. And at no point are you feeling disinterested because of the way that the dynamics are exploited and also the band, the way that they're not pushing tempos here. They're all in the pocket and that foundation is absolutely solid, that rhythm section. We've got that great addition of keys in there as well. They're just feeling so much of that frequency, but that string sound is such a nice underlayer for lead guitar, especially when you've got someone like Nils who can play the way that he can. And when I mentioned about Nils getting dropped from the record label in 1974, in 1975, he released his own album just called Nils Lofgren. And in 1976 and 1977, 78, 79, he kept releasing at least one album a year. He didn't release one in 1980, but then got back into it in 81, 82, and 83. Again, at least one album a year. And in 1984 was when he joined up with Bruce Springsteen for his massive world tour that he had. And that was Born in the USA, that tour that just followed, which is absolutely huge. And with all these albums coming out in the 70s, Nils did a lot of TV shows and interviews to help promote those albums. Of course, in the 80s, being on that tour with Bruce, it meant that his time was taken up in 1984. But then in 1985, he got straight back to it and recorded his album called Flip. Unfortunately, I won't have time to get through Niels's whole back catalogue because he's made 27 solo albums, he's done 10 albums with Bruce Springsteen, and he's done 6 albums with Neil Young, so he spent a hell of a lot of time in the studio, not only working on his own stuff, but being a backup for other artists. But Niels Lofgren, one of those all-round artists that you can depend on if he's in your band, because he can do so many jobs for you, but then also can hold your attention at the front of the stage with his voice and his playing ability and also his ability to write songs but thank you so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below let me know what you guys think and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and i'll see you guys at the next one rock